Hi guys. Today I'm gonna talk about the most classic part in Skyfall, with Roger Deakins as DP. Let's look at the first shot, the most classic scene. Bond walks towards the camera as a silhouette in the passage, and then a beam of light illuminates his face. The first frame is Bond's silhouette. Silhouettes can often give characters mysterious attributes. The strong contrast between light and dark indoors and outdoors is also a common technique in suspense films. Observing the perspective of the picture, a wide-angle lens is used. What simulates daylight outside the door is a tungsten lamp, so the color temperature of the light is low. Bond's backlight was created at a slightly tilted angle, and the camera position is also in the right, so Bond's shadow can be seen on the left wall. Bond walks closer to the camera, and frame by frame you can see that the light on his face gradually gets brighter as Bond comes into focus. Because the effect of the distance change of light under the inverse square ratio is not like this. This facial light should be made by a tungsten filament lamp connected to a voltage regulator. Coupled with the occlusion of the black flag, the light is shaped into this special shape. Because the bridge of a person's nose is curved, when the light is on the left side, it can also illuminate part of the right eye. Therefore, when the character approaches, a highlight of the wall on the left side is blocked, thus balancing the light and shadow of the entire picture. There is an unusual sound, Bond raises his gun and leaves the light area, the camera follows to move. The new lens changes its axis and the camera moves from Bond's rear left to the rear right. There is a wall lamp in the upper right corner of the picture, which is used as the logical light source for the previous face light. The camera moves to a position where the door gap appears in the composition, then moves forward together with Bond. Inside the room is a table lamp, used as a logical light source to create warm light in the house. There is a shape-modifying low-color temperature highlight on the doorframe, indicating that there is also a tungsten light in the lower right. At this time, the light on Bond comes from the effect of slightly changing the angle of the low-angle tungsten light just now. Bond opens the door. Roger Deakins is a DP who attaches great significance to logical light sources. Every time a special light effect appears, there will be a logical light source to explain it. The camera initially simulates Bond's subjective perspective, then pans the camera to show the space. Bond enters the frame and the perspective returns to the third-person perspective again. The light source in the bathroom is made of two high-power lamps, which then illuminate the entire space with the reflection of the white wall. Bond looks to the right side of the frame, past the camera, and the camera pans to the right to a new scene. This is the most important part of the whole scene. The story content is that the hard drive containing the agent list is stolen and Bond's teammate is seriously injured. There are two lighting positions in the entire scene. One is the desk lamp on the right side. Roger Deakins likes to use a fallen desk lamp as a logical light source. The second one is the key window. How are the light beams made? Fresnel, blinds, smoke are used. The beam created by Fresnel is shaped in the smoke due to the Tyndall effect, and the blinds cut the entire beam into strips. But observing the light density of the entire scene and the light effect of the windows, it is possible that there is more than one light outside the window. For example, in this scene from Conformista, the light outside the window is not as powerful as Fresnel, the angle is lower, and there is smoke. But the contrast between light and dark throughout the room is much higher than in Skyfall. Therefore, there must be a soft light accessory outside the window, but not a soft light cloth, because it is impossible to form a sharp beam through the soft light cloth. So the light here consists of two parts, a high-angle ARRI T12 to simulate the strong beam of sunlight, and below the T12 is a large reflector. So the white part of the window is not glass, but a reflector. The reflected light comes from two yellow headlights, creating soft scattered light into the room. In this way, the light coming in from the window has a soft and hard effect because it is a mixture of two different light sources. It can not only shape the shape, but also improve the basic illumination of the entire scene and provide details in the dark parts. However, if the direction of the sun is fixed based on the first shot mentioned at the beginning, and then moved 90 degrees to the other side, this is actually a bit confusing. In the mid-shot of Bond, the light on his face is softer because he is standing within the range of the yellow headlights reflected light. As Bond walks closer to his teammate, you can see that the light effect on Bond's face has changed clearly, because he has just entered the light area of the ARRI T12. This flowing light effect may save time and create a variety of atmospheres. As Bond's head swings back and forth in the light area, the light effect also changes. The effect of this kind of light source mixing is varied and artistic. 
it is really worth learning. As Bond moves into action, the light flows again and he leaves the ARRI T12 slight range. Then there is a silhouette. As Bond moved to the right, the camera lowered, giving his teammate one last shot. The new scene is another silhouette and the only light source for this shot is the tungsten lamp outside the window. You can tell by looking at the blinds that there is also a butterfly outside. There is a wall lamp in the groove of the passage, and the faint highlight in the dark can increase the depth of the picture. Only at the exit did he see real daylight. Bond walks out of the hotel and at the same time narrows the aperture to prevent the picture from being overexposed.